Hola Daros. Hey everyone, welcome to our only actual full day in Madrid. My work I found out, which was a bit of a fuck up on my part. But it's alright, it's alright because I looked at my walking path, I don't have a whole heap of walking through today. But only about an hour and a half. Yeah, about an hour and a half to two hours of like walking to each spot, so that's not too bad compared to some of the other cities I've been to where it's been two and a half, three sometimes in some of the other cities. So we're all good, we're all sweet. I'm standing right now in front of the National Art Museum. I was trying to I was trying to remember the Spanish name for it, but couldn't quite remember it. Uh, Museo del Prado, Nasi. Museo de Nacional del Prado. That's it. And that there is Velasquez, one of Spain, um, Spain's more famous artists, along with Goya and El Greco. Velasquez is one of them, showing his importance here, right in front of the National Art Museum here in Madrid. So we're about to go check out the Botanic Gardens for a bit. Uh, we've got a few other things around the place to to check off as well but um, today's going to be another one of those days where I'm not going to or going to pay very little in the way of entry fees um, just purely because of my own uh, my own um, financial planning and well the financial planning is fine it's just sticking to that plan which doesn't really work all that much for me but I'm like, I'm not too bad I can I'm still comfortable definitely comfortable uh, so it's not really a massive issue going forward but it's one of those let's just be careful for a little bit and make sure basically and as we move on it'll be even better but I have made um I've made Oktoberfest a little bit niggly for myself unfortunately but it's still going to be a great experience and a great time so keep an open mind and let's see what happens so here now on one of the more notable streets in Madrid the Prado of Del Prado also lends its name to the museum I just spoke about and it just goes down here it's a both cars and Pedestrians. It's not a mall as such, it's just some nice gardens and we are heading to the Botanic Gardens which are just down there anyway so it's sort of a street that heads towards those as well which is nice so it starts, to, starts that garden theme heading into the Botanic Gardens which I'm fairly sure aren't that big but they didn't, they didn't look it on Google Maps from memory so we'll see how that goes, it's going to be interesting I, did, I do remember seeing a bunch of weird patterns in the gardens on Google Maps, but that's about it. So, yeah, let's go and find out and solve this mystery, shall we? Get some squeeze notes. Seemingly, in Madrid especially, but Spain and other things don't open to 10, 10 o'clock. And that is apparently no different for the Botanic Gardens, um, which was a wee bit odd, but hey, that's cool, no worries. So I found myself at um, El Retiro, which is the big gardens right next door to the Botanic Gardens, um, which has a whole bunch of statues and monuments and well, something called a palace, but apparently it's a greenhouse, so that'll be interesting to check out as we're going around as well. There's a statue of the Fallen Angel or something here as well, which apparently is a uh, statue of Lucifer or Satan, whichever you want to call it. So of course that's the first place we're going to go. Um, up a bit of a slight incline here, which is why I am slightly out of breath. But it, it's not a big incline, but it's just long. And uh, my lungs suck. All that vaping and smoking from a few years ago. All catches up, I promise you. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to wander around El Retiro for a bit and see what we can find. 
So I'm here now at the Fountain of the Fallen Angel, and the Fallen Angel is obviously also known as Lucifer, and that's it there. Right there. I'm not sure how well you see that through there, but you can also see the little devils around the bottom, and I'm going to take you around it so you can see the fact that they've got different expressions sort of each giving that sort of each kind of temptation to sin I guess that's my interpretation of it anyway I'm not actually sure what the actual interpretation was and the people of Madrid didn't like it at first back in the what, 1877 when it got put here just purely because of the potential sort of um, satanic rift that it could cause in quite a Catholic city, or putting putting um, yeah Satan on a pedestal, really caused some upset in the city. And but eventually they came around and realised that it is a part of it, and you know you can't really do anything about that. So. And a really interesting fact about it is where, the, where it stands right there is exactly 666 feet above sea level, which is uh, curious, shall we say, if nothing else. Definitely curious that it's exactly 666 feet above sea level. Hmm, gives you something to think about. I also have just been inside the Palacio de Velasquez. Uh, also known as the Museo Reina Sofia. Um, yes, I did just have to read it off the sign because I couldn't remember it. Um, currently housing an exhibition by, what was his name? Nestor San Miguel, that's right. He was a contemporary artist in the 90s through to, I think the latest one I saw and made a point of seeing was, was 2015, so could potentially still be active as an artist. And um, yeah, it's quite cool. Very political. I feel as though the more contemporary with the newer art is, the more political it can be, or tends to be, I should say. Uh, yeah, we're noticing a lot of communist uh, notings in in that collection. Um, I did try and video in there, I did get told off for it, but in my defence, did not say anything about, um, about video not being allowed anywhere. Said no stands or anything like that, no flash photography, but yeah, I don't know. What will be, will be. It's not a major, major deal. And, um, yeah, so I may be going to the class house, but I do see at the moment that it is taped off, so we'll see how we go. But just up here, just give me two moments, there's a nice little pond with a fountain, which is quite nice. There we go. Now the glass house here has uh, another name for Palacio, I can't remember, Palacio something. But Palacio's palace, so I was a little bit confused um, when I saw it, because Palacio de Cristal, that's right, Crystal Palace. Maybe the glass used to be crystal, I'm not sure. I am not sure whatsoever. But that's alright. Still quite pretty though, isn't it? Still very pretty. But yes, you'll see here that it is that it is taped off unfortunately, but it is what it is. There's no section down to the pond, that's lovely. Although judging by the look of that water, I would not want to go in there under any circumstances. If I could help it. But, yep, we're almost finished around over here Park. There's another small jardin that I want to go to, or garden that I want to go to, because it looks quite pretty on the Google Maps. 
So let's go check that out, shall we? So I made it to the Jardin de Cecilia Rodriguez and you'll be able to understand why I quite wanted to come in here. Look at that. It's almost a, almost a, almost feels like it's a palatial garden, I think. And to be fair, I think that's a fair thing to say because I think the building down the end that you saw is um, the Palacio uh, de Cecilia Rodriguez. So that might make a little bit of sense. I only just thought about that after I said that it feels like a palatial garden. So yeah, so we're going to wander around here. Ooh, look at me, I'm a shadow. Not anymore. Oh. <laughs> I am a fucking child, I swear to God, sometimes. Um, but yeah, we're gonna meander about here and I've gone off the palatial steps here and I've just gone to a regular path. So I'm gonna dip back into what feels like the, well, I, what feels the, like the actual palatial side of things because yeah I think I may have slightly fucked up here and I'm fairly certain I wasn't meant to walk down that bit either but hey here we are I don't know what's going on anymore oh and it does look as though I need to clean the lens of the camera. So, um, just head back to Oh, this bit's quite trippy. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but it has quite a curved decline into this bit. And I wonder if that's just for the drainage of it. And then, yeah, again, apparently that's the Palacio down the end there. Again, it doesn't look like a palace, but. I wonder if Palacio means something else. I haven't actually looked it up. <laughs> it's just been guesswork really, so I should probably look that up. But anyway, I'm gonna wander around here. Oh yeah, plenty of peacocks in these gardens as well. But um, yeah, I'm gonna wander around here and I'll catch you on the flip side. Well uh, again, so we are now in the uh, Herrero de Palacios Jardín or the Garden of the Palace Herrero but it also doubled as the old zoo here in Madrid so it's still got the remnants of the of the old zoo the, I think they call it the Antico Zoo of Milan and that's lovely isn't it yeah so the Antique Zoo of Milan and um yeah yeah so it doubles as the garden and the antique zoo which is quite nice and that's what i showed you just back there where obviously where a couple of exhibits used to be once upon a time who knows what exhibits they don't have any signage up for it or anything like that unfortunately but it is what it is I guess that's how you tell that it used to be a zoo it's by things like that. So we're not going to be in the gut in El Retiro too much longer. I just think of the name there. I keep wanting to say El Retiro, but uh, El Retiro. El Retiro, if you want. Uh, yeah, I think this is the last real place that I wanted to have a look at while I was in here. Done a good chunk of walking so far, which has been nice. But probably a bit more than what I'd planned to, to be fair, which is not a bad thing by any stretch. Because it was only meant to be like walking from place to place today, it was only meant to be about an hour and a half. But the fact that I'm spending time and walking around uh, El Retiro already bodes well for the sets for today. So we'll see what it's like at the end of the day. I'm going to try my hardest not to look at it all day because 
To be fair, I don't actually want to look at it most days, but I can't help myself end up looking at part way through, seeing where I'm at. But yeah, and like the main thing, the main reason I don't want to look at it is because I don't want to put pressure on myself to reach a certain number of steps. I just want to go and do my thing, and then um, this is another thing that shows the used to be a zoo is that at both ends there are statues of animals which I think is quite cool as well it's about the plants I'm just going to go have a look at this random structure over here oh there's another one over my left shot as well so I'll have a look at that in a moment I'd, maybe not we, maybe I will it looks like no prison cell of sorts or what used to be a prison cell quite um quite random that I have no idea what it's about it was of the last morning ah so this used to be and close your phone was as well I'm hoping they're in um, much nicer places now than having to deal with that. What's well, Monos? So this used to be the monkey enclosure. The food's out of Monos. I don't know, how, oh, I suppose the walls are quite high, but it couldn't climb up them. <laughs> An elf on top of this one. I'm glad that I kept John for this one then. What the hell is going on with that elf? And again, same. I'm sure I think it's just two levels. It does seem like a, uh, a small uh, prison vault. Vault? I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean. So, that's what it was after. It does seem like a small prison cell. Uh, oh, I've been here before. I know this place. Sick, I'm not lost. Basically I need to go that way to get out, I believe. I've just seen some steps that look quite cool to go up, so we'll probably head up there. But for now, I'll say catch you later. As I'm walking around Madrid, I'm finding myself more and more impressed by the architecture. So you can see behind me there, that building there. I can't remember the name of it now, but it's absolutely stunning. Right here. Another building is just phenomenal. Which I do believe is Bank of Madrid. I think. Yeah, so our Bank of Spain. Bank of España. So um even the bank's pretty over there we've got another one. And there, there doesn't really seem to be a set Madrid style. Or even a Spanish style when you look at the other cities that we've like, like Barcelona, for example. Well, obviously, a pizza is a bit different, but you could include a pizza in that as well. It's all just a lot of the architecture here, even in Madrid, let alone Spain, is quite varied. Um, I guess depending on the age of the building and whatnot, but it is much more varied than, say, Rome, for example. Or just Italy in general. Italy in general it all seem quite um quite sort of similar. I just started getting spots on me so I think it's about to rain. Which I wasn't really expecting. But that's alright. We'll soldier on because that's all we do. And look at that. At the top of that. Advertising at the bottom. But look at the top of that. That is very fucking pretty. So we are on Gran Via now, which is like the high street of Madrid, the main street, main road. And just to the side of that statue on top of the building shows you is, I can see a Rolex saw. So I imagine this is the, um, the fancy shopping district uh, of, 
of Madrid which means of course we're gonna go window shopping at things that I'm probably never gonna be able to afford but hey let's go and do it well bugger this is meant to be Puerta del Sol which is uh, Gate to gateway to the sun or gate to the sun sun gate but as you can see it is all under reconstruction a whole bunch of construction work going on here and a lot of it being torn up and redone which I think is a little bit odd when you go to that sort of distance but hey here we are it does seem to be like wherever I go there is a lot of work being done um, especially in Madrid but in general as well but everywhere that I've sort of been is um, yeah there's been a whole bunch of road work or some sort of work going on everywhere but it is what it is not really much that I can do about it so should just sort of keep moving forward and enjoying it as much as I can so that's what I'm doing now it does occur to me and does seem to me that I have just walked into the sort of busy part of town of Madrid um, kind of makes sense for the del Sol and all that it is very much in the center of town um, so we're going to continue on pretty quickly uh, to a place called Templo de, Bo de, de Bod, which is an ancient Egyptian temple that has been, well, it's not ancient anymore, it's been reconstructed. It's not like an ancient Egyptian temple, but it was that back in the day. So we're going to go check that out. It should be fun. There's a lot of ancient Egyptian things around here. <laughs> uh, I've learned obviously there's a whole bunch in Italy. Obviously the British Museum has a lot of that was stolen. Um, yeah, just a lot to do with ancient Egypt which I found interesting. Something I don't know the history, history of, if I'm completely honest. So I'll need to do some research into that I think. Figure it all out. I suppose we, are, we aren't too far from Egypt here so that sort of makes sense. You know, Spain, Spain, Greece, Italy to a lesser extent, that, that all sort of makes sense, I guess. There's just across the Mediterranean. But yeah, we'll continue on and we will see what we find. You know, things like giant random bats and elephants. Lots of random stuff. So, uh, go forth and, um, yeah, go forth and prosper. I'm quite close to the Templo de De Bord, but I'm in a park called uh, Park de la Montaña. And it's not that high, but it steps, hence the breathing. But it gives you views like that, which is quite nice to be fair. Really quite nice. And there is a building in the middle over there that I'm pretty sure is the Templo de de Bord. So we'll we'll bounce around this park in Montaña, Monte la Montaña, and we'll see what it's about really before we hit the Temple of de Bord. Ancient Egyptian, remember? Sorry for mansplaining. Oh, here we are now at the Temple of Debord. Unfortunately, we can't go inside because my stupid ass didn't check. It's not open on Mondays. Um, slightly unfortunate, but not a big deal. You can see that view behind me again. So apparently this place is one of the best places to watch the sunset as well. But as you can probably tell by looking up, I don't think there's going to be too much of a sunset this afternoon. Uh, it keeps threatening to rain. I keep feeling little droplets of water but nothing solid yet but we will see yeah Tuesday to Sunday and holidays 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. 
three admission too, so it would, that would have been great. And here's the actual front of it. It's a lot nicer than the side I showed you first, but I hadn't been around there yet, so I hadn't seen it yet. There was an entryway on on the back, so that's maybe why I thought it was there. But that is quite cool, to be fair. I can actually walk over to it. I think I might do that. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop my waffling on at this point. Oh no, I can't, the gate's locked. Again, I guess that's part of it being close. I mean, I could just walk over there that this way, but I don't really want to get in trouble. And that is a possibility, I guess, so... Yeah, gonna leave that one alone. But we'll take a couple of photos in a minute. And then we'll head to... I think I'm heading to the Palace of Madrid. It might even be called the Palace of Spain. After this, so... Keep your eye out for that. Oh, if you're watching this then you might do it. You probably will anyway. Just coming up to the palace now. But I want to share a little story of me being an absolute fucking idiot. Um, so I was looking through all my bookings and stuff like that. Turns out the booking I've made for Paris, my next stop, I made for the 14th to the 16th. I arrive on the 13th and I leave on the 15th. There's the palace there. Yeah, and I leave on the 15th. So I've made the booking a whole day late. Now that would be fine. It would have been an honest mistake, no worries. So I tried to book another room somewhere else. But I tried to book another room. It was fine until I went to pay for it. The problem happened then that um, I checked my bank and there was a payment that came out that. I really didn't expect to come out leaving me with 14 New Zealand dollars which is about about 8 euros left and I'm not going to find a room for 8 euros uh, at this time now I do believe I've got some money coming in tomorrow so I should I might be okay, I should be okay but I don't like depending on that so I've, I've emailed the, uh, the hostel to see if I can move the booking, the whole booking a day forward and sign in on the 13th and leave on the 15th but all I can really do on that side of things is wait and hope uh, so it, it is, there is a distinct possibility that I might be without a bed for a night but it is my own fault, more of the palace there but yeah it is my own fault no, I got nobody else to blame on myself. I forgot about the payment. Didn't plan for it. Um, and obviously screwed up the booking of the hostel as well. So, again, that's my own fault. I have no one else to blame but me for that. So, it, it's just one of those things, I think. Just one of those things. And you can't really do much about it. But... Hopefully they come back and say that that's okay. Um, I get the feeling that it won't be okay. Just purely because the price I got it for was incredibly cheap. Yeah, the price I got it for is incredibly cheap compared to what they're charging now. So it's one of those things where, why would they? wouldn't make a hell of a lot of business sense for them to do that but they might be nice I'm hoping that they'll be nice so you just have to walk around and think it's really it is very pretty yeah let that be a lesson that you check absolutely everything 72 times over and you're talking to a guy who has checked everything multiple times but I just, I'm, I just missed this somehow and obviously missed my, um, missed that payment coming out, missed the date on that, so, I mean, it is what it is, uh, there's not much, or well, really nothing I can do about it at this point, except hope that people want to be lovely. 
If not, then I'll probably just stay at the bus station or something at night. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. I don't fly into Paris until tomorrow, so they've got a good 24 hours or so to, um, to let me know. So hopefully that's long enough um, for them to be able to work that out. And I guess basically I hope that there's room tomorrow night because they might not have any rooms available for it, which is a distinct possibility as well. And if they do, then they can charge more for it, things like that. But for now, I'll keep one around about that. Bunch of other very, very good statues here. The amount of detail that are in these statues as well is just phenomenal. I'm not too sure when they were when they were built, made, designed. But yeah, some of the uh, some of the detail in in these statues is really quite phenomenal. Like a perfect example. There's even just that little hawk there that you can see on that one. Absolutely superb, really. But I've been waffling now for a while about my dramas and my own idiocy. So, yeah, I'll continue on walking and I'll stop talking. Well, uh, so behind me now, it's. I notice that I say so a lot each time I start one of these. So I've been trying not to. Have you noticed? Uh, behind me now is the Church of Saint Maria, which is would be an Italian Basilica di Santa Maria, which is a common name in uh, in Italian, of course, for churches. But it's not so pretty as a facade, but from, once you see the dome or the Duomo, it's uh, quite lovely. But I wanted to show you from this angle because around this side, this is the palace again. Now the palace now doubles as an art gallery and it costs 19 euro to get in and from what you've just heard I ain't paying 19 euro to get in and the cathedral costs to get in as well so I'm happy just to look at the outside and have a look at the the architecture of the outside again lots of lots of different statues around here and monuments to different things but it is again religion and their architecture man and their artwork as well to be fair it's just kind of phenomenal really um, but you can see that Duomo a little bit better the dome a little bit better from this angle but I'm taking you down this end there is a reason for it I promise you it's not just me waffling on this time I know I waffle on a lot but not this, it's not just that this time. So the reason I've walked all the way down here and waffled on a wee bit, so you can see that. Appears to be a sky view tower over there. I don't know if you can see that sort of UFO shaped structure. But I thought that was quite a cool view considering it doesn't feel like we've actually gone up anywhere and we haven't climbed stairs to go up to a tower or gone up a lift to go up towers or anything like that. So I'm just going to come over this side see the views that were um, did have people in the way. So if someone was just taking a photo I didn't want to get in the middle of that. So. Something I learned from this is that Madrid is quite sprawling, it's quite spread out. A lot more than what I thought it was. I did get told that it was in when I was in Ibiza, but you never and I was looking I was looking for it, but you never really know know until you see it in person. So I very much believe it now and it's surpassed any expectation I had of how sprawling it was. So um yeah. 
I'll leave you beef now and uh, on to the next thing. I just done the Mercato de San Miguel, San Miguel Market, and two things. One, I don't know why I just did that to myself because it was fucking amazing. Um, but, and obviously, it's a food market, and obviously, I can't buy anything, so don't know why I did that to myself. And the second part of that is so many people holy shit so many people which is obviously my one of my least favorite things it's when the place is just packed and people don't people just walk wherever they want and at what speed they want and we'll just stop and stand in the middle of the of the walking path for a while because you know that's that's what happens so um yeah but that was a really cool experience as well just walking through there because some of the food in there looked and smelled beyond fucking amazing but onwards we go i've made it around to plaza de san miguel or san miguel square and i just want to show you is that so i don't know how well you can see the artworks on this building but that's really quite cool the square is a whole We've got people dressed up in costumes trying to get paid basically. I'm sure they would charge for photos at least anyway. But that's not gonna happen. Not for me anyway. It'll happen for some people, especially those with kids. And it's just surrounded by uh, restaurants and cafes and things like that, which makes sense with the market, with the market just up there as well. Yeah. Quick correction on that last one. This is not uh, Plaza de San Miguel. It is the Plaza Mayor, the major plaza of the central plaza, the plaza of Madrid. So I got that wrong. I'm not too proud to admit when I'm wrong. I just took because I'm so close to San Miguel, but it was San Miguel. So there you go. This was actually the last thing on my list of things to do today. So I'm going to make my way back to back to my hostel, pick up some food, and hopefully get some sleep because I need to be up stupid early in the morning uh, to get to to get to the airport for my flight to Paris. Um, just because the, the public transport system here is really quite odd. It's the only place where I've had to catch like two or three trains or buses to get where I need to go. And that could just be because of where I am. But most places had public transport to take me within sort of like a 10 minute walk of where I needed to go. With only having to catch one unit and not change over. Um, and the thing that worries me even that a little bit more about it is that the, the signage for a lot of places and a lot of public transport is not very good. Like there's barely even Spanish signage, let alone English signage um, during a lot of it. So it's always a wee bit scary. So I want to make sure that I leave proper early to make sure that I can get there at a decent time. Again, because I'm fucking scared about it. Um, but I'm sure I'll be fine. I usually have my wits about me and do pretty well with things like that, but Madrid's kind of fucked me up. Real weird, don't know how, don't know why, but Madrid has really quite fucked me up in that regard. And the rain's just started coming down again. So, kind of, maybe it's good timing that I'm finishing up. I don't know. Well, be better if I was right by my hostel and it's finishing up but unfortunately not but it's not that far anyway plus there's um, I am kind of just gonna wander and meander my way back I'm not too bothered about getting back there straight away but it would be nice to get back and get some food in me and then get some sleep so we'll see Hola, 
and welcome to the airport at Madrid. I am heading out shortly, well, short enough, um, but me being the dumbass I am, I got here four and a half hours before my flight. It's now about three hours before my flight now, and um, the baggage check-in still is not open, so out here having a bait, waiting for the baggage check-in to open. Um, you, you'd, you'd think that it would be at least three hours before, but yeah, and there are a few flights for me, but I do think they're all domestic flights, so I'm not really sure how that's going to roll. It has just started raining as well, so kind of good timing. This is the perfect temperature for me. It's about 25, I think, or it was when I left. And it was perfect then. If only I could stay like this the whole time, I would have been over the fucking moon. But um, we're off to Paris. I managed to get um, the accommodation sorted. I'd have to pay an extra 41 euro for it, but at least I have somewhere to stay, right? Mildly annoying, and it chews into my... Um, my what you call it? That thing. Uh, October 1st money. So I'm going to have to be real careful while I'm there doing that as well, which is mildly disappointing, but again, at least we've got places to stay, so it could be worse. I've just got to hope this payment, this rent payment comes into my bank account relatively early today, so fingers crossed and hopefully I should be all good and I will see you guys